happening here? Who is making that abominable noise? Sorry, monsieur, we have struck a child, I believe. The child, monsieur the Marquis, is dead. The coach struck him. This man is the father. Really, it is extraordinary to me that you people cannot take care of yourselves. Or your children. Always in the way. How do I know what injury you may have done to my horses? Here, give him that. Be brave, Gaspard. It is better for the poor little one to die so than to live in times such as these. He died quickly, without pain. Could he have lived an hour as I believe? Oh, you are a philosopher, monsieur. How do they call you? Defarge. Of what trade? A vendor of wine. That is my shop. Well, philosopher and vendor of wine. Pick up that and spend it as you will. Move on. Walk on. <laughs> It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief. It was the epoch of incredulity. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. Sir, I am Jarvis Lorry of Tilson's Bank. I am looking for a young lady, Miss Lucy Minette. Can you tell me where? There, sir. I beg your pardon? There, sir. Directly behind you. Taking tea with her companion. <clears throat> Miss Lucy? Mr. Lorry. Won't, won't you sit down? Thank you. Um, you know Miss Pross, don't you? Oh, a pleasure, ma'am, as always. Mm. Uh, what is this all about, Mr. Lorry? The letter said it was of the utmost importance. Quite true. Although I must confess it's such an astounding revelation that I... Indeed, I hardly know how to tell you. Is it something so dreadful? On the contrary, it's wonderful news. You were too young to remember, of course, your father being thrown into prison. At that time, any French nobleman could imprison any French citizen with no questions asked. Does this concern my father's estate? No, not his estate. He left you enough to live comfortably, as we both know. Uh, oh, Miss Lucy. Courage, Mr. Lorry. Your father, my dear child, your father has been found. What? Alive. He was left to die in prison. He did not die. Where is he? He's been taken to the house of an old servant of his in Paris, a man by the name of Defarge. It is in this house, above a wine shop, that we can find him. Will you be able to leave with me on the packet boat tomorrow? Oh, oh Miss Lucy. Good heavens, look what you've done. Did you have to frighten the child to death? What sort of a banker are you? Uh, Fetch the vinegar.
outside. It was an accident. Did you hear me? Yeah, here. Yeah. Monsieur Lolly? Indeed. The lodging you wish to see is on the second floor, if uh, you will come with me. Is he alone? Alone? God help him, sir. Who should be with him? Is the door locked? Always. Why? Why? Because he's lived so long locked up alone in prison that he would rave and tear himself to pieces if this door were left open. Doctor. Good day, Dr. Manet. Still hard at work, I see. Yes, I am working. May I uh, let in a little more light, Doctor? Uh. Doctor, you have visitors. What? What is, what is that? There is someone here to see you. Tell this gentleman what kind of shoes you make. The shoes? Can you describe the shoes for this gentleman? They are ladies' shoes. And the maker's name? Name? You ask my name? Yes. One hundred and five North Tower. Sir, do you not remember me? You are the jailer's daughter. No. Who are you? I don't... What? <laughs> Do you see? It is the same. How can this be? It was so long ago when they came to take me away. We held each other, my little girl. She was in my arms. Then when I arrived at the prison, I found these on my sleeve and I've... I've kept them ever since. How is this? Was it you? Not be. We've come to take you away with us. We've come to help you. Please trust us, my dear. Please trust me. 
Oh, my dear, please trust me. Thank God I found you. I found you again. My tools. What? What's that? He wants his tools to make the shoes. Oh. A moment, Doctor. I shall be right back. Shall we, Doctor? What is that? Some writings of his. A diary, perhaps. I'll put it in with his tools. No. Give it to me. We shall keep it here. Why? To read, you fool. Godspeed. To the barrier. Excuse me, Monseigneur, but your nephew is here to see you. Well, what do you want? Be quick about it. I'm busy. I'm here to say goodbye. I'm leaving France. For how long? Forever. Monseigneur! Where are your dogs? Dogs? You're shooting pigeon. Who fetches them? Oh, yes. Well, I really don't care much for pigeon. I would be hard-pressed to think of anything in this world you do care for, except yourself. Yes, perhaps. <laughs> yes, well, that's quite true. It is no wonder the family is looked on with nothing but thoughts of fear and slavery. That I take to be a compliment. Get away. Get away! Let me tell you, my dear nephew, fear and slavery keep the scum obedient. As long as the roof shuts out the sky. That may not be as long as you would suppose. The tide is turning. There's a new philosophy in the air. The people are going to rise up in righteous vengeance. Well, I shall continue to uphold the honor of our family, even if you will not. Honor? You can speak of honor. Sir, we have done wrong, and we are about to reap the fruits of that wrong. Never. In any case, I shan't be here to see it. France is your natural destiny. Accept it or be lost. I regret to say that France is already lost to me now. A wilderness of misery and ruin. I'm going to live elsewhere. By what means? By my own labor. Really? Where? England. I dare say if I stay here any longer, you might contrive to have me put in prison. Indeed. Would that I still had the power. Goodbye, Monsignor. I hope never to see you again. Be careful, child. They're not fond of spies in England, you know. Monsieur. Monsieur. I beg you, take me with you to England. I can't work here any longer with him. And if the people rise up against the family... My dear Gabelle, you are perfectly safe here. You're a servant, not a member of the family. But I've served the family for so long. Indeed you have, my good friend. For as long as I can remember. But you see, I am no longer in any position to keep a servant. I must try to make a living for myself. I am sorry, Gabelle. 
But you have my promise, my sacred promise, that no harm will ever come to you. Goodbye, my good friend. steps, Father. There's a packet boat waiting. I feel so tired. Mr. Lorry! Miss Pross! May I be of any help? Monsieur, thank you. My father, mm. he has been very ill. Allow me, please. Ah, there you are. I've taken Miss Pross safely aboard. Mr. Lorry, I'd like to introduce... Darnay. Charles Darnay. Your servant, sir. If I can be of any further assistance, please call upon me. Oh, Here, let me so take kind, it. monsieur. Thank you. Come along, doctor. Come on, you, you can trust me. Turn around. That's it. Right, one, one foot up. Yes, that's it. One step at a time. Very good, Doctor, yes. Mr. Darnay, you're so very kind. Thank you. If I can be of any further, is... Good evening. With these papers, I relinquish all of my property and my titles here in France. We shall see that they are delivered to the proper authorities, monsieur. On speed and a safe journey. Goodbye, monsieur. Come. Thank you, Jerry. I'm not looking forward to this. It's a sad business. It is, sir. Hmm. All right. All set now, sir. Thank you. Got the carriage outside. All right. Thank you. All right, sir. What's going on, Jerry? Where are you off to? The old Bailey. Trial for treason. Know what that means, don't you? They'll hang him up, slice him down, burn up his insides, and chop off his head. You mean, if they find him guilty? Oh, they will. They always find him guilty. The prisoner is charged with being a traitor to our Lord the King by reason of his having assisted the French King Louis in his wars against England in North America. He has thus indirectly aided the American general, George Washington, in his hopeless struggle against our noble country. Your Lordship, I will prove to this court that this man, Charles Darnay, is a contemptible spy. The prisoner has been passing and repassing 
from France to England on secret business of which he can give no good account. Stepney. Good God, man, there's a trial going on here. Get out of here, sir. Late night. Sorry. I have witnesses in this courtroom today who saw the prisoner on a trip from France nine months ago. It is my information that they saw the prisoner confer with fellow conspirators on a packet out of Le Havre. I propose to call one of these witnesses at this time. Dr. Manette. Dr. Manette, can you identify the prisoner as your fellow traveller returning from France? Unfortunately, I was recovering from a long illness at the time. My mind was a blank, you see, for a long period. And I can only thank a gracious God now for restoring my faculties once again. Once again, can you identify the prisoner? No. Were you travelling alone? I was accompanied by Mr. Jarvis Laurie and my daughter. Thank you. I now call Miss Lucy Manette. What a beauty we have here. You have looked upon the prisoner. Yes. Speak up, please. I have. Did you not see this man confer with two other men aboard the packet when you returned from France? I... Speak up, please. We cannot hear you. Yes. I saw him. And were there not papers passed between these men that night? I saw papers. I could not hear what was said. Mr. Darnay told the me... The prisoner. The prisoner. Yes. He was very kind to me and to my father. Very considerate. I do hope that nothing I say here today will repay him by doing him any harm. Oh, you may not wish to uh, testify against the prisoner, Miss Manette, but be that as it may, is this the man you saw? Speak up! Yes. Thank you very much. I will now call upon Mr. John Barsan. <laughs> I saw the prisoner with my own eyes. I watched him as he passed on secret information to two French gentlemen on three different occasions. You are absolutely certain that it was the prisoner here, Charles Darnay, who passed on this vital and important government information about her military strength to these, these spies. I am, sir. Would you, sir, be so very kind as to amplify your public-spirited gesture even further by telling the court in more detail about the events which surrounded the passing of this vitally important government information that evening? Yes, sir. I should be delighted. It was during the month of February that I had occasion to travel to France. Oh, what do you have, my wicked fellow? I'll have two crown. If you don't mind, please. But of course, the money first, always. He works for the French. Him. He's a paid the informer. Prisoner in the dark. Real name, Gwellerman. Spies for the French everywhere. Nasty reputation. Just mention his real name, that's all. You do that. And he'll suddenly forget what he's here for. Who paid him this time? Who knows? Someone in France. Doesn't matter. You want him to shut up? Mention his real name. Their air was decidedly conspiratorial. Then the papers were passed between them. The two Frenchmen disembarked. And the prisoner went to his cabin where he stayed for the rest of the journey. 
I thank you for your testimony, sir. And I wish to commend you now in this courtroom for the noble and patriotic duty of coming forward to identify this traitor. Well, at the defense will question the witness. You may proceed. What do you live upon, sir? Property. What property? I can't precisely remember where. Now, this information that you say you saw passed on, did you actually read it? Yes, sir. But I didn't study on it. Marked secret, you know. How much did you receive to give this evidence today? Nothing. Nothing at all to lay a trap for this prisoner? No. You swear to that? I do. Malad, I have no further questions of this witness. Oh, just one moment, Malad, if I may. Uh, if I may, sir. I do have just one more question. Tell this court that you're absolutely certain in your identification of this prisoner. Yes, sir. Have you ever seen anyone who looked like the prisoner? Not so much as I'd be mistaken. I ask you then to look upon my learned colleague here, Mr. Sidney Cotton. Would you lay aside your wig, sir? Very much like it. Yeah, yeah. Look closely, sir. Well, yes, there's a certain similarity. But I'm not mistaken. The man I saw on the wharf was the prisoner, Charles Dunney. I should like to probe your memory a little further, Mr. Gwilliman. Yes? Would you like a closer look, perhaps? Mr. Quillerman? The name of the witness is Bart, sir. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Forgive me. Speak up, sir. Do you remain certain in your identification? No. Uh, louder, please, sir. I don't believe the court heard your answer. No. No! <laughs> You can no longer identify the prisoner as the man you saw. Correct? It could have been someone else. Correct? Correct. Thank you, sir. I have no further questions of this patriotic witness. <laughs> no. I don't understand what happened to him. What happens to all men? When the past catches up to the present? Uh, my lord, the jury desires, with your lordship's permission, to retire and deliberate the verdict. You may proceed. <coughs> you firm inquire, Mr. Lorry. The young lady seemed quite distressed. How is she faring now? She's recovering, thank you. Mm, I'll tell the prisoner. He seemed to be quite concerned for her. Oh, perhaps you might tell him yourself? Well, I... Oh, I, but uh... of course. A respectable bank gentleman such as you, it wouldn't do to be speaking to the prisoner in public, would it? The 
the jury reached a verdict? We have, my lord. We find the prisoner, Charles Darnay, innocent of all charges. Mr. Darnay, I'm happy to have brought you off with honor. <laughs> Indeed, sir. You have saved my life. Thank you, sir. I did my best. My congratulations, sir, upon your vindication. And you have my regret, good doctor, that I brought you and your lovely daughter into this. Thank you, doctor. Mm. Well, come along, my dear. Good fortune to you, sir. So, Mr. Lorry, it seems that men of business may now speak to Mr. Darnay. Men of business are not their own masters, sir. We must think of the house we serve more than ourselves. Don't be nettled, Mr. Lorry. I am certainly not nettled. And I am not certain what you have to do with this matter at all. As far as I can see, it's none of your business. Quite right. I have no business. It's a pity you haven't, sir, because if you had, you might leave us and attend to it. Oh, love you, sir. No. Then I... perhaps you might realize that business is a good and respectable thing. Mr. Darnay, I hope you've been preserved for a prosperous life. Good day to you, sir. Good day. Well, if you'll excuse me, gentlemen, I have work to do. It's a strange chance, wouldn't you say? I beg your pardon. That you and I, two lookalikes, should be thrown together on such an occasion. Frankly, I don't see all that much resemblance, but uh, I hardly feel part of this world again as yet. Yes, it's just a few moments ago that you were pretty far advanced on your way to another. Come, let me show you to the nearest tavern. Oh, do come along, Mr. Darnay. I've done nothing but dream of a good wine while these numbskulls were deliberating which world you should belong to. Drink up, Danny. Drink. You may be grateful to be among us again, but as for myself, I wish only to forget this world. It has no good in it for me, except perhaps this wine. A toast. Let us have a toast. What toast would you have? Wait, wait, it's on the tip of my tongue. It ought to be, it must be. I swear it's there. To Miss Manette. Ah, <laughs> to Miss Manette. There's a fair young lady to handle a coach in the dark. Yes. Tell me. How does it feel to be pitied by and wept for by such an angel? Is it worth being tried for one's life? Is it, Danny? Yes, I dare say it is. I would even suggest that an angel such as this is worth up giving up a life of dissipation for. Oh, dear, did I say that? Well, I mean it, yes. For this particular angel? Oh, yes. Another question. The truth, sir. Do you think I particularly like you? Really, Mr. Carton, I have not asked myself that question. Ask it now. 
You have acted as if you do, but I doubt that you do. Indeed. I doubt it too. But I begin to understand you. Nevertheless, I want you to know how grateful I am for all that you and Mr. Stryver have done for me. Good. Let's have a drink to that. You'll forgive my saying so, Mr. Carton, but I think you have been drinking too much. You think, sir? You know, sir. I always drink too much. In fact, I do nothing in moderation except work, correct? If you say so, Mr. Carton. And you shall also know that I'm a disappointed drudge, sir. I care for no man on earth, and no man cares for me. That is much to be regretted. You might have used your talents better. Maybe so, Mr. Diner. But don't be too confident. You never know what it may come to. I bid you good night, sir. Come in, please. Lucy will be here in a moment. I understand that you are doing quite well now as a tutor of the French language. Yes, I've been most fortunate in that respect. And I expect to have a post soon at the university. What a lovely day, Mr. Darnay. I'm so looking forward to our drive in the country. No more than I. And I. Yes, indeed, Miss Pross. What would I do without you? You shan't. I promise you. Enjoy yourselves. going for a stroll, Miss Pross. May I ask you, sir, to remain where I can see you? Of course, Miss Pross. Good evening, Monsignor. Yeah. 
you think I'm drunk, don't you? No, Monsignor. Ah, uh, let Okay. I am... Let me... Ah, It's... Take your hands off. Hey. Mr. Carton. Do come in. What a pleasant surprise. I just stopped by for a moment to inquire if... Uh, that is to say, I've been invited to a regatta in Devon on Friday, and I was wondering, hoping, perhaps, you might be able to join me. Oh, dear. I'm sorry, Mr. Carton, but I promised Father that I would go with him to Hastings on Friday, a medical conference. Oh, I see. Well, perhaps some other time, then. I'm sorry. Won't you have some tea? No, no, thank you. I'd best be moving on. A glass of sherry, please. No. Thank you. My warmest regards to your father. Sir, I do not doubt your loving Lucy. You may be satisfied of it. Have you spoken to her? No. Why? In deference to her father? I have seen you, Doctor. I have watched the two of you together. I have seen an affection so unique, so touching that I... That is why I hesitate. She is devoted to you with all of her heart. You were lost to her. And your return has brought her nothing but happiness. How can I then bring my love between you? And yet... Yes? 
I beg you to believe that I would never put a separation between you. I look only to loving your daughter and serving both of you to the death. You speak so feelingly that I thank you with all my heart. Do you have reason to believe that Lucy loves you? I think it possible, but without your permission, I could have no hope at all. Well, there is no question. She is everything to me, far more than life itself. And knowing you, sir, I'm delighted to say that you have my consent. I thank you. But in truth, you don't know me. Not really. You see, my present name is not as my own. I came here to England because... No. I wish only to better deserve your confidence. No. Later. Sir? You may tell me when I ask it of you. If Lucy should give her consent, then you may tell me on your wedding day. As you wish. May your hopes, then, find success. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Are you going to work on the Harrison case? It doesn't interest me. <laughs> We're not paid to express our interests, Sidney. Trevor, hmm? have a drink. A drink at this hour? Are you serious? Now, look, Sidney, I... I must tell you to your face that you concern me. I worry about you. Thank you. You're certain to end up without position in a debtor's prison. I quite agree. You spend all of your money on sinful pursuits. Exactly. You know, Sine, you should really consider putting an end to this dissolution. Any suggestions? Mm. How? Marriage. Marriage? Look the situation in the eyes, isn't it? That'd be very beneficial for you. A man in your profession at the bar to have a wife. Am I not mistaken? Are you not unmarried yourself? <laughs> oh, I intend to get married. When? Yeah, very shortly. Congratulations. And may I ask the name of this most fortunate lady? Well, <laughs> I hope this revelation won't make you uncomfortable, but I speak of Miss Lucy Manette. Now, I know that you visited her on occasion, and we both know she has no great fortune. So she's a, she's a charming creature. And I've made up my mind to please myself. She will have in me a man already quite well off, and a rapidly rising man of some distinction. Yes, it'd be a very good piece of fortune for her. <laughs> but then she is worthy of fortune. <laughs> What's the matter? <laughs> now, look here, I find your reaction most annoying. Stop it. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. You'll see. You'll see. Absolutely. The situation in France gets worse every day. Or better, as the case may be. Better? Are you serious, sir? I think that France has been ruled too long by tyrants. Perhaps something better will come out of this turmoil. I must say I very much doubt it. <laughs> you don't have a drink, Mr. Carton. Oh, no, thank you. I don't care for one. They tell me there's going to be an afternoon of cricket in Hyde Park on Saturday. I was wondering if perhaps you might be free on this occasion. Mr. Carton, I don't know what to say. You're so kind, so thoughtful. But to tell you the truth, I'm not at liberty. I see. No, I'm afraid you don't. Actually, it's something more than that. It's that... Well, you shall know very shortly, I promise, before the evening is over. 
I think Mr. Carton. Mm. No, thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, my dear fellow, but I'm afraid you cannot refuse. <laughs> I have an announcement to make, and I would like everybody to listen very carefully. I wish to announce the engagement of my beloved daughter Lucy to this wonderful young man. How marvellous. My congratulations, oh, sir. A toast, if you will, to a long and happy life together. To a long and happy long life happy together. Life. Long and happy life together. I simply can't believe it. I can't. That, that charming creature married to him. Hmm. Don't you agree, Sidney? It isn't as though that darn old fellow is a man of business. There's no comparison between his position in life and mine. None whatsoever. Do you hear me, Sidney? It's damn difficult to understand. Yes, perhaps I should have made my intentions known sooner. Yes, that must be it. I delayed too long. Still to throw herself away on a French tutor. Oh, well, women have committed similar follies before and have repented in poverty. <laughs> Just as well, I suppose. I should have gained nothing by such a liaison. Careful. Well, then. Hmm? Be very careful of how you speak of Miss Manette. Do you understand me? Who did he kill? The Marquis saint Evremond. An excellent choice. The Marquis killed his son. He ran over him in the street. I would not require such a reason. The house of Evremond. They are recorded. All of them. They are recorded. Here, in my stitches. As plain to me as the sun. the price. with great skill, madame. I am accustomed to it. May I ask what it is for? A shroud. Pardon? <laughs> it is only a pastime. Not for use. One day, I may find a use for it. One day. Did you see the hanging today, madame? A bad business. Why? 
If people kill other people with knives, they deserve to pay the price. Well, surely you must feel some sympathy for him. My husband. Oh, good day, monsieur. I was just talking about the unhappy fate of poor Monsieur Gaspard. I know nothing of it. You are Monsieur Defarge. I am. I have the honour of sharing a mutual friend with you, Monsieur. Dr. Manette. Yes? When he was released from prison, I understand that you had charge of him. Such is the fact. His daughter came to you here? Such is the fact. Have you heard about them recently? We have not, sir. She's going to be married. Excellent. She should have been married years ago. The English are uh, cold, it seems to me. <laughs> it's a curious thing. She's going to be married to the nephew of the Marquis saint Evremont. You know, the man who was killed by poor Gaspar. He's called Charles Darnay. But he's an everyman, make no mistake. Well, thank you for the cognac. Good evening. Who is he? How should I know? Barsad. The name is Barsad. He's a new spy commissioned to the district. Register his name. Two names. Two. The spy, Barsad, and the nephew of St. Evremond, Charles Darnay. It is strange. After all the sympathy we showed for her father, that she should marry such a despicable dog. For her sake. He'd better stay out of France. His destiny will take him where he has to go. And we shall be waiting. Only a moment, gentlemen. Well, if they don't hurry, we shall have to delay the wedding. One more moment. And so it became necessary to renounce everything I once held dear. My property, my country, even my name. Your name? I tried to tell you long before this. I wanted to forget my past. Now I feel it's only fair to tell you that my name is St. Evremond. Charles St. Evremond. A name that I detest for all that it stands for in France. Excuse me. It's getting very late if we are to... Fetch the carriage, Miss Pross. We're coming at once. I, Lucy... Take thee, Charles. Take thee, Charles. To my wedded husband. To my wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. And there too. And there too. I plight thee my troth. I plight thee my troth. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dominus vobiscum. Et cum spiritu tuo. Oremus. Respice quesmus Domini. Bless me. I, dear God, I don't know what to do. Calm yourself, Miss Prats. Calm yourself. He doesn't know me. Dr. Manette doesn't know me. What are you talking about? Come with me, please.
But my dear friend, Dr. Manette, look at me, please. Sir, this is not your proper occupation. Think, my dear friend, think. Lucy, is anything wrong? I've been thinking about Mr. Carton. Oh. I know he's a difficult man, but I would ask you to be lenient with his faults. I think he has a heart he very seldom reveals with deep wounds in it. I know. Oh, Lucy. Here we are, so strong in our happiness. And yet, if you had turned away from me, if you had rejected my proposal of marriage, I might have found myself in the same position as Sidney Carton. He loves you. I'm certain of it. Good morning, Miss Pross. Uh, do you suppose I might have some breakfast? I, uh, yes, of course. At once. Thank you. Come in. Mr. Lorry is here, Doctor. Oh. Don't get up, Doctor. Don't get up. Finish your breakfast. I'll join you for a cup of tea. Miss Pross. My dear friend, my dear, dear friend. All but finished. You're well this morning? I am, yes. Mm -hmm. If I may, Doctor, I'm anxious for your opinion. A curious case. It involves a very dear friend of mine. Advise me well, for his sake and his daughter's. Well, what are you suggesting? An affliction. It has borne this gentleman down in the past, and yet he apparently recovered. And now it's returned. You... You spoke of his daughter. Does she know of this relapse? No. Oh, thank heaven. Can you tell me how it came about? An association from the past. It was strong, intense, and lurking in the mind. Is it likely to happen again? Oh, no. That is good comfort, sir. And yet... Yes? This occupation, during the affliction, this making of shoes, if perhaps the necessary tools could be... Well, if they were gone, could not the fear go with them? They are old companions. I know. I know. But I inquire for your daughter's sake as well. Can it not be done? Hmm.
Doctor. I'm dread to be alive at that. You Frenchman, ah. Uh, forgive me, Charles, but, oh, really, I can't understand it. Ah, oh, the scoundrels, absolute scoundrels. Forgive me, Charles. I can only thank God that I'm not French. Things will settle down eventually. Eventually? Oh, eventually. They've had years now, and it's worse than ever. It's more than your life's worth to set foot in the damn country. Where is she? Did you see her? Did she come by this way? I thought the child was with you, Miss Pross. She took a biscuit and she ran away. Oh. It's time, I think, to apply the paddle. Oh. Oh. Not guilty. Who took the biscuit? I am the counsel for this beautiful creature, and I say to the court that she is not guilty. Who took the biscuit? I did. You are a gentleman, sir, but you are also a liar. Miss Pross. <laughs> Come, little one, change horses. Father. It's time to take your afternoon nap. No. Oh. Goodbye, Mr. Carter. Well, that's an excellent suggestion, if I ever heard one. What do you say, Mr. Lolly? I'm at your service. If you will excuse us, my dear. No, I don't think I've ever told you how much I... Uh, I appreciate these visits with your family. We enjoy them too, Mr. Carton. Indeed, you are like a part of the family to us. I worry about you, you know. You're looking so pale these days. Indeed, well... The life I lead, you see, is not conducive to good health. Can you not change your life? Too late, I'm afraid. I shall never be better than I am. There, you have it. I'm like one who has died young, you see. All my life... might have been. No. No. I refuse to believe that. Oh, I may once have had ideas about striving afresh, beginning anew, shaking off this sloth, fighting out the abandoned fight. A dream. All a dream. But I do wish you to know that you inspired it. Mr. Carter. Oh, if you could have returned the love I have for you, I might well have brought you nothing but disgrace and misery. Indeed, the low habits that I scorn at this very moment I will yield to again and again. Is there no way that I... That I can turn your affection for me to some good account? All that you could ever do for me has been done. But you must believe me when I say that I would embrace any sacrifice for you in this world. Indeed. I would gladly give my life.
go with me, wife. I go at the head of the women. To the Bastille! To the Bastille! May I please, I beg you, may I have the honor? Thank you, monsieur. At last. It has come at last. It is only the beginning. <laughs>
Mr. Laurier, please. Yes, sir. In his office. Come in. My dear Charles, how good of you to come. These are very trying days for us here. My time is so limited. I hope not too trying. The situation in France, hopeless. If the bank's documents are seized or destroyed, it could bring about untold mischief. No, indeed, I shall have to go to France myself. I should be very careful, then. I'm an English citizen. They dare not touch me. And yet, to undertake such a journey, your loyalty to the bank is quite remarkable. Loyalty, duty, it's all the same to me. I'm a businessman, and always will be. And, of course, I shall have Jerry Cruncher to keep me company. Now, let me see, where did I put that letter? Ah, here we are. It's addressed to Charles Darnay. Heretofore, Charles St. Evremond of France. And it was sent to you? In the hope, I gather, that the bank might be able to afford it. From Paris? Yes. May I? Of course. I hope I haven't brought you unwelcome news. Monsieur Gabel, a man who worked for my uncle, he wanted to come to England with me, but I couldn't manage it. And now, he's been placed under arrest. But why? For working in the house of St. Evremond. All those who served St. Evremond are now in prison. Good heavens. I entreat you, please, to release me from this prison of horror. For the love of justice and the honor of your noble name, I have done nothing but to serve and honor your family. I beg you, before the hour of my destruction, help me. Design Gabel. Hmm. There's nothing you can do, of course. I must go to Paris. That would be far too dangerous. If there's anything I can do to save this man, then I must go. But please, Charles... I gave him my promise, my sacred promise, that no harm would come to him. But please, think of your family. They mustn't know. Not until after I have gone and my resolution might weaken. When do you intend to leave? Tomorrow morning. Too soon. I shan't be able to join you. Well, think about it. I beg of you, reconsider. I have only to look at this letter. And my mind is made up. I have no other course. Goodbye, Mr. Lorry. Godspeed on your journey. And yours, sir. And yours. I have an engagement, one of my classes. There's a chill tonight. Keep a scarf about you. I shall.
your papers, citizen. I'll give you an escort to Paris. An escort? Whatever for? I don't need one. Silence. Aristocrat. You'll have an escort. And you'll pay for it. I have no choice. <laughs> choice. <laughs> Listen to me. <laughs> you'll pay dearly. And you'll thank your God for our protection. Can't you see I'm here under my own free will? You are a cursed aristocrat. Leave him be. He'll be judged in Paris. Judged? What are you talking about? Yes, judged and condemned as a traitor. My friends, you deceive yourselves. I am no traitor. Enough. You will very quickly discover, monsieur, that we have a decree banning all aristocrats and condemning to death those that return. Oh. Now, about the money for the escort. One hundred Louis. Right, send him on. papers of this prisoner. I ask you, sir, to take notice that I am a free traveller and a French citizen. Where are the papers of this prisoner? All right, come with me. Defarge! Defarge! We have another one! Come with me. Come on. You. Are the aristocrat Saint Evremont? I am Saint Evremont. Married? Yes. Where is your wife? In England. We were married in England. Without doubt. You are now consigned, Evremont, to the prison of La Force. For what reason? Haven't I the right at least to. Aristocrats have no rights. is the daughter of Dr. Manette. You know him? The doctor is known by all good patriots. My name is Defarge. I keep a wine shop on Saint Antoine. You have heard of me? It was your house, monsieur, where Dr. Manette was found by my wife. I must ask you, why in the name of heaven and hell did you ever come back to France? To save the life of a devoted servant. That is all. That is the truth. It is a bad truth, and you are a fool, monsieur. 
We have a newly born female here called the guillotine. Can you render me some assistance? None. Can you answer a single question? Say what it is. Am I to have any communication here with the outside world? No. There is an English gentleman here in Paris, a banker by the name of Jarvis Laurie. Would you please tell him that I have been thrown into the prison of La Force? Just that, that only. I will do nothing for you. My duty is to my country and the people. I am the sworn servant of the people against you. I will do nothing. Excuse me, sir. Well, what did you find out? Bad news, sir. The information's reliable. They assured me that. Tell me, tell me. Taken him prisoner and locked him up. Oh, my God. He's under the name of St. Evremont. Marked in secret. What does that mean? Afraid it means solitary confinement. There's no way we can reach him. Mm. Not now. Sorry, sir. All right, Jerry. Will that be all, sir? Yes, that's all. Oh, dear. <sighs> My dear Dr. Manette, it is with the utmost regret that I bring you this most unfortunate news What can we do? I shall go to Paris immediately. Mr. Lorry said I was that... a prisoner in the Bastille for over 16 years. They know me. They know what I endured at the hands of the nobility. They will listen to me. I am certain of it. I'll go with you. Oh, no. Father, don't you see I can't possibly stay here without knowing... without... I've got to go with you. There's no question well, about it. Know. I'll tell Miss Pross. How soon can we leave? Father!
No, sir. Mr. Lorry left for France over three weeks ago. I don't know when he'll be back. France? Yes, sir. Do you know if the Darnays travelled with him? No, sir. He was travelling alone. They're here. They're here. What are you talking about? Who's here? You might not. Lucy? Dr. Manette? I don't understand. We received your letter. But I had no thought of you coming here. We simply couldn't remain in London under the circumstances. I assure you I've done everything I possibly could. You, my dear friend, are not Alexander Manette. There is no patriot in Paris who does not know my name, and none who would touch me. I shall use that influence now for whatever it is worth. There is still some killing in the streets. They drag the prisoners from their cells and... Oh, it's all right, my dear, it's all right. Charles is quite safe as yet. And, Doctor, if you have the power you say you have, then make yourself known to these devils for God's sake. Make them take you to La Force. I shall do so at once. Father! Have faith, my dear. Listen to me! Kill him! Give him that knife! Look at me! Listen to me! I am Alexander Manette. Do you know the name? For 16 years, a prisoner in the Bastille. Manette! Manette! You are the physician! Yes! Dr. Manette! Locked in a solitary cell without sight of one human being for over 16 years. I know the pain. I know the suffering you endure. I am a victim as all of you. I am one of you. What do you want? Freedom for my own daughter's dear husband. A terrible mistake. They have taken him to La Force. I beg you to take me there. Help me to set him free. Take the prisoner at the force. from Dr. Manette. Just a moment. Monsieur Defarge? The same, monsieur. I bring you a message from Dr. Manette. Believe me, I would only do this for the good doctor. I have another message for Miss Lucy Manette. Can you take me to her? We'll go at once. I'll just get... My wife, monsieur. She will join us. For what purpose? So that she might recognize the faces better, monsieur. For their own safety. I see. It's from Charles. He says that he... Well... He says that my father has influence. Let us hope so. It is enough. I have seen them. We may go. Please, madame, you will help me to see him if you can. Your husband is not my business. It is you. Then for my sake, please be merciful to my husband. What does your husband say in the letter? Influence. Influence? Yes. Then let that release him. I implore you, madame. I 
as a woman. As a wife yourself. Oh, yes. We've all seen our women suffer. And our husbands and our children. Our children dying in the street of poverty and hunger, thirst and misery. Do you think the troubles of one wife means anything to us now? You have, Dr. Manette, been a secret prisoner in the Bastille for a period of over 16 years. That is true. And now today, you appear before us to seek the release of Monsignor St. Evremond, who calls himself Charles Darnay. Yes. Hmm. We have, good citizen, considered your request, and we've made our decision. The prisoner must remain in custody. For how long? You've heard our decision. That is all. For how long? There will be a trial in the future, monsieur. Good day. But prisoners are being dragged out of their cells and slaughtered in the streets. So Devramon will be held in safe custody, I promise you. And I promise you, Monsieur le President, that I shall not leave Paris until his freedom has been accomplished. <laughs> they will not release him. Oh, frightful. It's frightful. They've already beheaded the king and queen. And still they have tribunals springing up all over the country. The revolution keeps growing. Mm. Do you know they speak of the guillotine as a female figure? Even make jokes about it? They say it's the best cure for a headache. Prevents the hair from going grey. Madness. Madness. What in God's name do we do now? Wait for his trial. And then? I will speak. Indeed, I will speak. Take heed, sir. I beg your pardon. If I was you, sir, I wouldn't put one foot on France at this moment. Not for a million shilling, I wouldn't. Know what I mean, sir? Thank you for the warning. someone wave. Father. Yes, I think it is. Oh, wave to him, darling. Wave, wave. There you are. Citizeness. I salute you. Tomorrow. What? Tomorrow we shall see. And therefore, for crimes against the Republic and crimes against the citizens of the Republic, 
You were sentenced to death by the guillotine. Take him away. Charles Saint Evremond, called Danny. and Evermore. You are accused as an aristocrat whose life is forfeit to the Republic. Silence! Silence! The prisoner may speak if he so desires. Monsieur? Your Honor, I no longer feel myself to be an aristocrat. I have voluntarily relinquished a title that I assure you was distasteful to me. I gave up all my property long ago, and I have been living by my own industry in England. Yes. Is there anything else? I've married a woman in England who is the daughter of citizen Alexander Manette, who sits with us here today. Why have you returned to France? try to save the life of a prisoner here. Is that a crime in the eyes of the Republic? This tribunal will ask the questions, monsieur. Have you any more statements to make? This prisoner, this man, has already met his fate. I simply wish now to return to England. And I should like to call upon Dr. Manette so that this tribunal might hear his words. This prisoner stands before you as one of my own family, as one dear to my heart as my own flesh and blood would be. He has been honorable to me and devoted to my daughter. He has never once spoken in favor of the aristocracy to me or to anyone else. On the contrary, he has renounced it before the world. He has given up his title, his worldly goods, and I ask you not to take his life. I ask you, I beg you, as a citizen, as a patriot, do not take his life. Have you anything more to say? No. The jury will render its verdict. Not guilty. 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 You have heard the verdict of the jury. The prisoner is declared by this tribunal to be free. Well. It is done. Is it? Have you not heard? I am a patient woman. The time will come. What is that? The writings of Dr. Manette. Hmm? Oh, yes, his very own words. We found this diary in his room, did we not, my good husband? Patience. Not long now. Not long now.
Now, Mr. Cruncher, I'm ready if you are. At your service, Miss Pross. We are going out for food and wine. We shall be back shortly. It's dark, Miss Pross. Do you think it's safe? I have Mr. Cruncher to protect me. Absolutely. But we shall be careful, mind you. I don't trust any of these savages. They have two thoughts in their mind, murder and mischief. I can vouch for that. The short and long of it is that I am a subject of His Most Gracious Majesty, King George III. And I say, confound the French and their politics and their knavish tricks. On George, our hopes we fix. God save the King. Be cautious, Miss Pross. We're not out of France as yet. Speaking for myself, it can't be soon enough. We shall make arrangements tomorrow. I don't think any of us wish to stay here longer than we have to. What is that? I beg your pardon. I thought I heard someone on the stairs. I heard no one. It's them. They're coming back for you. Quickly, hide. It's all right, Miss Pross. Charles has been set free now. What is this? Citizen Saint Evremond called Darnay. Yes. You are Evremond? I am. You are once again, Monsieur, a prisoner of the Republic. Hold him. <laughs> why? Tell me, why am I again a prisoner? You find out tomorrow. You're summoned for tomorrow. Sir, I do not understand. How can this happen? He's been denounced, Citizen Doctor. He's been accused. By whom? Ask no more. If the Republic demands a sacrifice of you, then you, as a good patriot, will be happy to make it. The Republic goes before all. The people are supreme. Sir, I beg you to tell me at least who denounced him. It is against the rule, good doctor. But the prisoner has been denounced by the citizen, Citizeness Defarge. No. No, oh, and one other. What other? You'll find out tomorrow. Come along. Is it? It's me, sir. Gentleman to see you, sir. An English gentleman. English? Bless me soul if it isn't Sidney Carton. Good heavens. Show him in at once. My dear fellow, you're the last person I'd expect to find in France. Danny is in prison, is he not? Yes. And there's nothing you can do to help him. Nothing. We shall see about that. Dr. Manette has done all he can, and he has more influence with these people than you or I. Believe me, Charles Darnay remains in prison. And I don't think the good Lord himself could set him free now. In that case, maybe the devil can accomplish it.
Good morning, citizen. Good morning. I believe the name is Barsat, John Barsat, sometimes called Willeman. What do you want? I saw you testify at the Old Bailey against Charles Darney. What of it? Indeed. Once a spy, always a spy. And now I see you work here in the prison. A spy once again for the prison guard. Do you like working in prison? Leave me alone. Oh, not so quickly, citizen. I think I might well use a friend in prison such as you. I'm no friend of yours. Oh, but you are, whether you like it or not. Don't you understand? I hold all the cards. What are you talking about? Mr. Barsad. My dear fellow, I think for your own sake you had better come with me. And we shall discuss it. Well, Mr. Laurie, what do you think? I agree with you. Once a spy, always a spy. You can't prove a thing. Prove? What do I need a proof? I shall simply denounce you to the nearest citizens committee. John Barsard, alias Gwilliman, who once worked for the noble lords of France. Can you stand such an investigation? Will they discover unpleasant things about you? It's blackmail. Ah. Now there you have it, at last. My ace. Well, look over your own cards and see what you have. Look into your unsavory past and tell me what your chances are now. I... Yes? Did you say something? About your cards, perhaps? Or mine? You have a good hand, sir. You might even call it a guillotine hand. Do you play? What do you want of me? It's a very simple request. If things should go ill with the prisoner Charles Darnay, then I must have access to him. Impossible. Just once. Or do you prefer that I play my hand? Having access to the prisoner will not save him. Just once. I tell you, there's no such thing as escape from La Force. Just once. Very well. Thank you, Mr. Barthard. You may be certain that I shall be in touch with you very shortly. In fact, sooner than you might think. Good day, sir. Hmm. I don't understand. The man's quite right. There's no way of escape, so... What good would it do? My dear Mr. Lorry, please. I ask only that you do not tell the Minettes of this arrangement. In fact, I think it best if I do not see them while I'm here in Paris at all. As you wish. Bear up, Mr. Lorry. Courage. citizen. Good evening.
evening, citizen. How goes the Republic? Excellent. It is very good. 63 today. Do you watch them? Always. I never miss them. You ought to go and see for yourself when there's a good day. <laughs> good night, citizen. Citizen. Uh, may I keep you open for another moment or two? Come in. Come in. What can we do for you? For you, monsieur. For me. Monsieur, to keep them separate. You know the consequences of mixing them. Perfectly. Here we are. Fourteen Louis. Be careful, citizen. I will try. The public prosecutor announces to this tribunal that the prisoner, Charles St. Evremond, called Darnay, has been denounced. <laughs> he has been denounced by three voices. They are Ernest Defarge, <laughs> Therese Defarge. <laughs> well, who is the third voice? Alexander Manette. No! Quiet! I will have quiet in the chamber. Monsieur le President, what the public prosecutor has stated is impossible. I have never denounced the prisoner. Never! I call upon Madame Defarge to speak to this tribunal. To you. I have in my hands a diary in the handwriting of our good Dr. Manette. He wrote this diary from the moment he was put into prison. And do you know why he was imprisoned? For trying to save the life of a dying woman. Yes, a woman who had been abused by Monseigneur Philippe Saint Evremont, uncle of the prisoner. This woman died from the injuries she received at the hand of St. Evremond. The good doctor could not save her. But 
for reporting her death to the authorities, and for that alone, he was thrown into prison by Saint Evremond. Thrown into prison to rot, Monsieur. Death! Listen to me. The words of Dr. Manette. And so to the Evremonds and their descendants, to the last of their race. I, Alexander Manette, do this last night of the year 1761 in my unbearable agony denounce the Evremonds. I denounce the house of Evremond to heaven and to hell. Ah! Save him now, good doctor. Save him now. I call for the verdict. Monsieur le President, please. Quiet. Let's have the verdict. Guilty. 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 Charles and Evremond, enemy of the Republic, death. Death within 24 hours. No idea my uncle was responsible for I know. Forgive me. There is nothing to forgive. May God protect you. That's enough. Come. Lucy! Lucy! I'll take it to your coach. Show me the way. Mr. Carlton, please, Doctor, now is not the time. Show me the way. I think. Fetch some tea, if you will. Disturbed. Why? Dr. Manette. 
He's already suffered so much in his life. And he will suffer more. There are more lives here than one, monsieur. What are you talking about? There is another saint Evremont. <laughs> Surely you wouldn't. Not the little girl. To the last of their race. No. Let us put an end to it now. I beg you. Let's stop it here. Tell the fire and the wind where to stop. I shall have them all before I've finished. All. <laughs> why? You know why. Tell them. Tell them why. The woman who died at the hand of St. Evremont. She... My sister! Oh. And you tell me to stop now. They shall all perish. Oh! Who's there? Carton. Mr. Carton, I must speak to you alone. It's urgent. I can. I'm afraid it's the shock. His mind has gone again. Oh, Mr. Carton, we're lost. Our last hope has gone. I must hold you to a promise, sir. Mm hmm? This is the certificate that enables me to pass out of the city. Sidney Carton, Englishman. Keep it for me until tomorrow. But why? Because I would rather not have it with me when I visit Charles in prison. Be sure you have the doctor's certificate. Lucy's and the little one. They'll have to pass the barrier of the city. But surely you don't think they're in danger too? No one in the house of St. Evremont is safe. Not anymore. The certificates can be recalled. Don't look so horrified, Mr. Lorry. You have the chance to save them. I? Heaven grant that I may, but how? Get coach and horses early tomorrow morning so that they might be ready by two in the afternoon. Arrange it as soon as possible. It shall be done. Tell Lucy of the great danger, that she must leave Paris immediately. Be certain that Miss Pross and Mr. Cruncher's papers are in order. I will. Have the coach standing by. The moment I arrive, take me in and drive away. And then, for England? For England. Promise me solemnly that nothing will alter the course on which we now stand pledged to one another. Nothing. You know, Mr. Lorry, when we first met, I looked upon you with contempt. Yes. I dare say I wasn't quite fond of you either. I'll take the old gentleman home. Tell me. If you could look back and say, I have done nothing good at all. I have secured no one's love or affection or even regard. Would not all of your years then be years wasted? Why do you speak of such things? You're still young. True. But my young way was never the way to age. Doctor, we're leaving now. Come, let me help you. Goodbye, Mr. Lorry. You're a kind and good man. I envy you, but I can't be like you.
Be quick about it. I'll wait here. I know. Of all the people on this earth, I'm the last one you expected to see. I pray to God, sir, that you are not a prisoner. No, I come here only on a request from your wife. But there's no time now to tell you why I bring it or what it means. Take off your coat. My coat? No questions. But can't you tell me at least what? No. If you have escape in mind, I can tell you that it's hopeless. You will only die with me. I do not ask you to escape. I make no such request. Here, change this waistcoat of yours for mine. Believe me, it's not going to work. The ribbon. It can't be done. Take my coat. Hurry! Don't you know, every attempt to escape from this prison has failed. I implore you, do not add your death to the bitterness of mine. Do I ask you to walk out that door? If I should ask that, then refuse. Now, sit down. I have something for you to write. Sit. Is your hand steady enough? I was just writing a last note to Lucy. Good. Now you will write what I dictate, exactly as I speak. To whom? To no one. Right. Well, that's what he said. I may need you and Lebec shortly. Why? The visitor looks quite ill. That I do so is no subject for regret or grief. Well, look at me. Now, do you think your hazard's so great? Not if you keep your part of the bargain. Take me to the coach. You? I, him. We are the same. I have merely exchanged my life. You must leave by the same gate we entered. He's unconscious. Of course. You told me he might be weak, but... Didn't you notice? I was weak and faint when I arrived here. And I am fainter now that you bring me out. In fact, I am overcome. Now hurry, man! Guards! You swear not to betray me. I have come this far. I will not stop now. He is the fool. He should know better than to visit a prisoner if he can't bear up upon seeing him. Are you ready, Miss Pross? Yes. How is Dr. Manette? He's all right now. He understands what's happening. I think you'd better fetch them. Yes. 
We won't be moving very quickly, sir. If we all take this one coach... Hmm. What do you suggest? Me, Miss Pross. We'll hire another coach. Catch up with you later at the coast. Yes. Have you got your papers? We've got everything we'll need. They won't be wanting us anyway. Hmm. I think it's time we told them. No need. They'll find out for themselves. Where is Mr. Carton? In the coach. Come, Doctor. Dear God, do we have to leave now? I can't bear it. Please, my dear, in the coach. Quick. Charles. Yes, it's what Charles. Is... He's all right. He's just drugged. If you please, Doctor, we must leave at once. There's no time to lose. Come on, quickly. Help the child, Jerry. Papers. Here you are. Is he sick? Asleep. Thank you. Move on. What do I care, eh? What do I care for this Dr. Manette? <coughs> and I tell you, his daughter, she is now an Evermond. And she will be the next to die. <laughs> she has a fine head for it. Brown eyes and golden hair. I cannot trust my husband in this. I must act for myself. I must act for myself and quickly. Where do you go? To her, to the Manettes. She'll be there, waiting for her husband's death, ready to impeach anyone, full of sympathy for the enemies of the Republic. I shall then report every word that she says. Wonderful, marvellous. Here, take this. Have it at the guillotine for me this afternoon. I shall take my usual place. He dies today. He's certain you are there. Do you think I would miss it? I'll leave you now, Miss Pross, and fetch the coach. I'll be ready when you return. Oh. I wish to speak to the wife of Evrimond. Where is she? She... She is resting now, and she can't be disturbed. I would see her. And I say you will not disturb her. Out of my way. Madam, you might be the wife of the devil himself, but you will not get the best of me. I am an Englishwoman. We have no quarrel. I have come to pay my respects. You have come here, madam, because your intentions are evil. And you may depend I shall hold my own against them. You will tell her that I wish to see her. I will not, you wicked foreign woman. I am your match. Imbecile, I will not take answers from you. Get out of my way. You will not have a handful of that dark hair left if you put a finger on me. Wife of everyone! Answer me! If she is gone from here, I can have her followed and brought back. I can have her pursued. They are not gone. She is resting within and shall remain there. Listen to me, woman. I have killed men with knife and pistol, and I shall tear you to pieces if you do not get out of the way. Try it, madam. I am an Englishwoman. Try it. Oh. 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 
Fish going to check? No. Are you all right, Miss Pross? I feel... I feel as though there had been a crash. And now, a stillness. A stillness for the rest of my life. I've done nothing. I'm a seamstress. It's not that I'm afraid to die, but I don't know why. Yes, I know. Monsieur, would you ride with me at the tum? Would you hold my hand? <laughs> yes, of course. I am only a little weak. It will give me courage. I would be proud to hold your hand. <laughs> Come on!
keep your eyes upon me and nothing else. If you remember the words that passed between us long ago, you will readily comprehend this when you see it. I am thankful that the time has come when I can prove those words. That I do so is no subject for regret or grief. Far, far better thing that I do than I have ever done. It is a far, far better rest that I go to than I have ever known. <laughs> 